How many of you have seen something beautiful on your drive into work lately? No? Um, <laughs> thanks. Um, <laughs> inspiring? Eye-catching. If you're one of the 13,000 people who travel up and down Macaulay every day, it's been a while. No, unfortunately, you've seen chalky paint, boarded up windows, and my favorite, bad graffiti. How do I know this? Well, I don't just drive up and down Macaulay Avenue every day. I live there. I've lived in Highland Park for almost 10 years, and one morning, I was stopped at a stoplight, and I took a look at my neighborhood. And I thought to myself, wouldn't it be better if this wasn't ugly? This is an area that didn't just need like a neighborhood cleanup. It needed beautification. But how do you bring beauty into an area like this? Where do you start? If you would, indulge me for a minute. Let me tell you a little bit about myself and what I've been doing for the past few years. Afterwards, maybe you can tell me why I didn't think of this sooner. Now, you probably wouldn't know this without me telling you this, but I'm an artist and a painter. A couple years ago, I found out about a mural project on the south side, the Discotheca Demolition Project. Now, I'd never really done a mural before, but I wanted on this project. So I did what any self-respecting person would do when they asked me if I had experience. I lied. <laughs> now, don't worry, the project was a huge success. Um, my piece was actually very well received, and it led to a lot of commissions for me around the city. I have pieces on the North Shore. I've got a few pieces on MLK. And I also have some work in businesses around town. Now, fast forward a little bit. I've been doing murals for a while, and it's been a really good living for me and a great creative outlet. But there is something bigger on the horizon, and it's coming right at me. I can't see it yet, but when it reaches me, it is going to hit me like a two-ton heavy thing. I'm working on the North Shore. I'm painting pretty high up in a ladder, and I hear a noise behind me. And I mean, like, directly behind me. I pull out my earbuds, and I turn around, and there in the intersection is a double-decker bus. The bottom level is full of people waving like crazy and taking pictures like they're free. Upstairs, everybody is on their feet, pumping their fists and chanting, paint, 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 paint. <laughs> but that's when it hit me. This kind of artwork doesn't just change the way that buildings look, it changes the way that people feel. You see where I'm heading with this, right? Okay, meanwhile, back at my stoplight, now I'm thinking to myself, will this work in my neighborhood? I mean, yeah, it's easy to get people psyched up when you're in the hottest, hippest area of Chattanooga, but can I get people this psyched up about an area that they've avoided for so long? Can I do it with art? <laughs> well, I had to try. I wanted to take this traffic corridor and turn it into an event for everybody who experienced it, whether you were waiting for a bus, driving through, or living in the neighborhood. A little bit of research turned up dozens of projects where street art, urban art, public art of almost any kind had made a big difference in areas all over the country. Uh, Windwood walls in Miami, living walls in Atlanta, hell, the entire city of Philadelphia. <laughs> so now I had all of these ugly buildings and a browser history full of success stories. I knew that Macaulay could be changed, and I felt that I could do it with art. So, now what? Later on, a reporter would phrase it so much more eloquently than I could when she called it a unique transformative agent. I would call it simply the Macaulay Wall Mural Project. First, I would recruit stellar artists from around the city and pay them to work. Let me repeat that. I would pay the artists to work on the project. I know, right? What a concept. Offering artists exposure as compensation, unacceptable. <laughs> exposure doesn't put mac and cheese on the table, am I right? Secondly, 
we'd build a sense of respect for the art and the area by inviting people from the neighborhoods to come and work with us. My thought was that if somebody works on the piece with us, they're going to have a sense of ownership in it, a sense of pride. They're going to show that off. They're going to be less likely to tolerate somebody trashing it later on. Third, we document our work and our progress on social media and you know, the traditional news media. We wanted everybody in Chattanooga to know what we were doing on Macaulay. We also thought we could entice more painters, more volunteers, maybe some viewers, maybe even some more neighbors and some businesses to the area too. Oh, and in the process, we might put some art on the walls. Now, the framework for, as far as I know, the world's first drive through gallery is in place. I pitched the idea of funding this project to the Make Work Foundation. They honored us with a grant. And we went to work. Six artists, very few creative restrictions, and the full support of our neighbors. And we did this. Yeah, you know, absolutely. A little sidebar here. The artists who worked on this blew me away. Um, a lot of these people had never done large-scale murals before. They lied to get on the project. <laughs> Here's some more. I'm going to show you some slides, if you don't mind. This is uh, David and Kendrick's piece. David should be in the building somewhere. If you want to show him a little bit of love, I don't mind. Once we started putting paint on the walls, the response from the city and from individuals was phenomenal. Arts Build, the UN Foundation, Causeway, the Tennessee Arts Commission, the Community Foundation of Greater Chattanooga all graced us with grants. That's mine, by the way. Don't clap. I'm not doing it for clapping. I just want you to know. Now. In addition to all those foundations, EPB, the Highland Park Neighborhood Association, and dozens of people volunteered with and contributed to the project. People were really beginning to get behind this thing. This, by the way, is my favorite volunteer. That's my son. You can clap for him. <laughs> Just last month, Causeway brought 50 volunteers out to Macaulay for one of their cause mobs. In just under three hours, they did this. Do you know what that sign says? That sign says, hey, welcome to Highland Park. The Macaulay Walls mural projects have become very popular with people. They've become the backdrops from anything from senior portraits, To rap videos. Usher did give us a shout out on Instagram. I'm gonna leave this up for a second. I don't know if you noticed, but there's a number at the top of that page. It's really close to two million. That's two million pairs of eyes that saw our work and our city. That just astounds me. So, our first year is almost come to a close. What have we done? What has the project accomplished? Well, if you've been up and down Macaulay, you've seen it. That stretch is cleaner than it's been in years. I know that, I've lived there. Of course, we put some great artwork on the walls. But what about the less tangible changes? Well, Ace Hardware started advertising their paint across the street. <laughs> Coincidence? Maybe. The building owners now come to us and ask to be included in the project. Which is great because now I don't have to go door to door. And I went door to door. Business owners from around the city have called me to ask me about replicating the project on their street. Organizations outside of Chattanooga's arts community are taking notice of this art project and what it's doing. We held a fundraiser a few months back at the Flying Squirrel. You may have heard of these, where you invite all your friends on a weeknight and they'll give you a percentage of their sales from the night towards your project. We were told to expect between three and four hundred dollars. Not a bad take for a couple hours for us. We invited all of our friends and all of our Facebook followers, and at the end of the night, when all was said and done, we had raised thirty-two hundred dollars. 
$3,200. That's all money that went in artists' pockets. That's money that paid rent. That's money that bought supplies. That's money that bought new computers, other equipment. Now, people, not just foundations, are getting behind this project. While we work, neighbors would come to us and talk with us, talk about the murals, what they liked, what they didn't like. <laughs> a lot of these neighbors have become friends, and some of them even collaborators on later murals. People tell me all the time now, I went out of my way to drive down Macaulay to see what was new, or I brought my friends from out of town down Macaulay to see what was new. <laughs> I live in the neighborhood. It's not uncommon for me to see carloads of people pull up at the base of the mural, get out, take pictures, take pictures in front of it, and walk up and down the avenue. The old fears of this area are subsiding. So, now what for the world's first drive through gallery? Well, we still have some ugly walls. But fortunately, we have inspired artists who have lots and lots of eye-catching and beautiful artwork to go on those walls. Do you remember my earlier question? Wouldn't it be better if this wasn't ugly? Of course the answer is yes. I just didn't know how much better until I saw these results. Who was it that said, a thing of beauty is a joy forever? Wrong. Everybody who's driven up and down Macaulay in the past year, that's who. Thank you. <laughs>